So I just realized that somehow my uh, microphone got muted before I could do example uh, six and finish this off. We only have a couple more things to talk about, but um, we're going to get into the examples of how to find the stable vector for a Markov chain uh, transition matrix. Um, and it's, uh, it's pretty simple. Um, there is a technique that we would use um, if we didn't have like a graphing calculator uh, that, well, it's, it's pretty complicated um, and it uses systems, but I'm just gonna kind of cut to the chase and make this as simple as possible for you guys. So if you remember back a couple slides uh, in the previous part of this video before my mic got cut out, um, the higher you raise your transition matrix. So remember P2 is the transition matrix to the second power. P4 is trans transition matrix to the fourth power. P8 is a uh, transition matrix to the eighth power. The more transitions you look like later on, like the eighth transition and so on, the higher the power you raise it to, you'll notice that the rows get more and more alike until at some point each row is basically identical to each other. And these rows are, uh, once they're all the same, that is what's known as the stable vector. Um, and so if all we have to do is go further and further out in terms of the higher transition, number of transitions we talk about, the higher the exponent we use, then we'll come across that um, stable vector. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my transition matrix here. And if I wanna find um, it's stable vector. Well, let me just pick some absurdly large uh, number of transitions or exponent to raise it to and just see what I get. So for example, let's take this exam uh, this matrix here. Let's close that. Um, let's go to our matrix menu. I believe I've already typed this in because um, yeah, that is the same thing, right? 0 0.7, 0 0.25, yeah. Uh, because I already did it in the last video, but it, it got cut out. Uh, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to take that matrix. Oops, hold on. Oh my gosh, I'm breaking it, breaking it. Quit. Clear, okay. Take that matrix. That's it. now input in my calculator. Raise it to an, a, a really big power. Um, let's make it to the 100th power, right? That's pretty big. And I'll see that. Now, I, you can see that the first row, 0 0.444, 0 0.555, is the exact same thing as the second row, 0 0.444, 0 0.555. I'm going to hit the math, enter, enter key, so I can see this. Oh, excuse me. I can see this as fractions. And you can see that my top row and my bottom row are identical, 4 ninths, 5 ninths. Um, that is going to be my stable vector. Um, so my stable vector for this problem is four ninths, five ninths. Because every row in that matrix will be four ninths, five ninths. So what that means is basically after a large number of transitions, uh, the probability of being in state one or in state two become essentially the same exact thing, which is very neat uh, how that works. We're gonna do this as well for um, this example which we already saw this matrix earlier, um, which is kind of nice. I believe it's already in my calculator as well. So if I just go to my matrix. I've already typed this in as matrix A. And let's raise it to, let's say, the 100th power as well and see if them, they're all the same. So again, I got the decimals, but to make it fractions, I'm going to hit the math, enter, enter, and I see the fractions. And I'm hoping to see them all match. And if they do, then I did a good enough job picking a big enough exponent. But if they're not all the same, pick a bigger exponent, like the 500th power. But this was big enough because I have one third, four ninths, and two ninths all the way across. So that's our um, stable vector for that problem. One third, four ninths, and two ninths. All right, and this last one um, talks about the heating and cooling, uh, which was this one, I believe, right? The 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.1 problem. Um, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.1, yes. 
So I'm going to need to type that matrix in again. Uh, it's asking, find the long run probabilities that the service specialist will be in each of the three districts. So we're just going to take that matrix, which I need to type in. So let me put it on the screen. It's this matrix here. Type that in the calculator. And again, let's raise it to a, an absurdly large power, like 100. Let's see if that's good enough. Um, that matrix was 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.1. So 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.1. 0 0.1, 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0.6, 0.1. I think that's right. Yep. So now let's, uh, let's take that matrix, raise it to, let's say, the 100th power. And, okay, so you can see that's what they're looking like before. Let's see if this comes into good fractions. Hopefully it does. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, our stable vector will be 9 38ths, 21 38ths, and 4 19ths. Uh, there you have it. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and write that down because it's already on the screen. I want to go ahead and end the video here. Uh, the idea of the stable vector, remember, is that basically after a certain number of transitions, the probability of being in state 1, state 2, state 3 become identical. Um, and it won't change, which is kind of interesting. So anyway, that'll end it. I'll see you guys later, uh, maybe in 8.4, maybe in chapter 9. All right, bye.